Welcome to Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a short kind of curly pompadour type of shape. So that means we're going to be doing some scissor work, some clipper over comb, and a perm. <laughs> That's right, a perm. All right, so let's get started. All right, so to get started, we're going to go through, and I'm going to undercut all this hair underneath pretty short. So I've already sectioned out the center of the recession to the quarter part straight down to the center of the back of the head a little bit above the occipital bone. So I'm going to take all this hair and I'm just going to take it pretty short. So in order to get through this hair pretty quickly, I'm going to go through and do some clipper over comb. And I'll start underneath, I'll angle the comb at whatever angle of graduation that I want and go through and take all that hair short. I'll first start crude and go like two or three sections just to get the hair off and then I'll slowly start to fine tune it. So I'll stick the, the comb in, clippers on, straight across. Now I'll go a little bit higher, straight across, a little bit higher, straight across, a little bit higher, straight across. And I'm just trying at this point just to get the majority of the length off and to get a rough shape. Start same thing down here on the bottom. Let me spin that around so you can see. I'll start here on the bottom. Uh-oh, it's clogging up. Too much hair. Come on, baby. There we go. Now, after I go through and get a crude shape like this, then I'll start to fine tune it. And the methodology that I'm gonna do is the same thing I was doing with scissor over comb. The more passes that I have, the cleaner that I can get the shape. So I'll start low, angle the comb at whatever angle that I want that to come out at, and then I'll go short to long. So it's a, a type of graduation or tapering is the, the barbering term. All right, so this is the methodology for doing clipper over comb, is I just keep going over and over and over until I get it as velvety smooth as I'd like, or if I need to fine tune it some more, I can do some scissor over comb. So at that point, I'll take my Osaka scissors and just go through and do the same sort of thing, but instead of the clipper doing the work, I'll just let the scissors do the work, is I'll go up to the parting. and just keep fine tuning and fine tuning. I would probably not try to do this clipper over comb if I couldn't do it with scissor over comb first. So scissor over comb is kind of like training wheels because if I go through and I start to make a cut and it's not right, I can stop halfway through the scissor stroke. Whereas the clippers, I go across it and the hair is gone, it's disappeared. So I have to be much more precise and in control of the clipper than I do with the scissor. I'm not saying the scissor you can be sloppy with, but I have a little bit of a, a safety net with the scissor. And then I'll just keep going over it until I get it as smooth as I'd like. Now if I want to take this in a little bit tighter through here, then I'll take some clipper attachments. 
So we'll take a, a one, put it on. First thing, I'll open it up and just slowly go through and hit that bottom and just take that in a little bit smoother. Come here. Take that a little bit smoother. Tighten it up and then just a little bit on the edge. Stop moving. And I can take that in as tight as I'd like, as much as I'm willing to work it down and taper it. Okay, so now that we're back from being shampooed, I've gone through and sectioned a uh, center part to the crown, and then from the crown to the ears. And that gives me the back half of the head and the front half of the head. I want the back half of the head to blend, and then I want the top to be disconnected. And let's just go through and just start in the center. Pin that out of the way. Now if I look at, at my head shape, and I look at the cut I've done before, it's going from short and it's gradually stacking. So I want to continue that line up and out about like this. So I'm going to pull this section down so that the top of the section is at that elevation. So I'm going to pull out down, there's my guide, and then I'll go through and point cut that through. Look at it, just make sure it blends, and then pivot. Same thing. There's my line, and I'm going to go through and elevate that up and out until I get to that length that I've cut in the center. Look there, pivot, remove my center section. Now I have section two and three. There's my line. I'm still blending with my underneath at this point. The next section now is being angled to the mastoid, which is that bump right behind. Come on, baby. It's that bump right behind the ear. So at this point, you'll notice that my line starts to curve up. So as I'm pulling this top back, I'm going to follow this line that I've previously cut, which means I'm not going to blend underneath. So this point is where I, my disconnection is going to start. Up and out. Now it's going to start my blending for my layering. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. We've gone through and sectioned out our center section. And now I'm going to use this length back here as my short length. And then I want to determine my long length by where it falls on its face. I can have it longer. I can have it shorter. I'll probably choose somewhere right about the tip of the nose. That will be my longest. And then I'll work down to my shortest. So that's going to be my long length, and that's going to be my short length.
Okay. Now after I've gotten my center section, which is going to be my guide for the other two sides, I'll go to one side and I want to take a section that's about the same and parallel to that first section. And now I'll combine these two together and cut them in the center of both of those sections. So I have finished section number two. So now I'm going to remove the center section that I used as my guide and keep that pinned out of the way. I have section number two. I will add a parallel section to that. So now I have section two and three. I'm gonna cut these pulled straight up to the ceiling right in the center of both of those two partings. Alright, so I have finished section two and three. I will remove section two, pin that out of the way. So now I have section number three and four and I'm going to do the same thing, both into the center of that section straight up towards the ceiling. Come on. So now I've finished that. Now if I want to cross check this section, I'll just take a section. Come on, baby. Come on. There we go. There we go. This mannequin hair is thick. <laughs> so if I cross check, I take an, a section the opposite way. I'm just going to pull everything straight up. Check and see how it looks. Oh, not too bad. We got a few little stragglers there. But we can get those by cross checking. And then I just follow that straight back. Not too bad. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. So you can tell we've got our basic shape finished. We've got a nice undercut on the sides. We've got it cropped tight in the back. We've got it blended in the crown. And this is obviously much longer on the top. So to go through and put some curl in it, I want to focus and not do a curl that's too small and end up with like a poodle perm. But I also don't want it so large that uh, it just droops out and doesn't look like there's any curl to it at all. So I'll gauge that by making sure I can wrap the length of hair around the rod at least one and a half times. Anything less than that, I won't get a full curl. So I'm going to use as big a rod as I can get to get it one and a half, maybe two times around, but nothing larger than that and I want to keep it around that area. So let's get started. Let's do the perm, woohoo!
Okay, now we've, uh, we've finished our wrapping and it's just a basic little wrap, a couple of little bricklays in the front and then just symmetrical throughout. Nothing too complex. Uh, a couple of pointers that really help is when you're wrapping it, make sure all the hair goes into it straight because if it's not straight, if it's crossed, then it's gonna perm that kink into it. So you want everything as smooth as you can get it. And um, another thing, just process it according to the manufacturer's instructions, but I overly rinse. I rinse really, really clean, especially the first part, get all that solution out, towel it dry, and then paper towel it to try to get all the moisture out of it. The more moisture that I get out of it, I feel that the better that the processing becomes. Process it just like normal with the neutralizer, rinse it clean, and then we're ready to go. So let's see how we do. And we are back. We finished the haircut. We finished the perm. We finished the blow dry. I just diffused it a little bit. Got us a nice uh, Lee Rocker Stray Cats kind of rockabilly pompadour. Um, I think the shape's very versatile with it being cropped short in the sides and the back, blended in the crown, getting longer towards the front. And one thing that, that really makes this work is that the top is squared off. It's not rounded and that really gives it that iconic kind of uh, rockabilly pompadour type of shape. Uh, the perm gives it the structure. Uh, you could wear this a lot of different ways. You can wear it up, you know, Bruno Mars style. You can wear it prints over covering one eye. You got a lot of versatility to it. So try it out. Let me know what you think. Please check out the Jatai Academy. There's a lot of really great information, a lot of cool videos over there as well. And we will see you next time. Thanks. Hey.